Hey guys, meet Ronald Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday. We've got a storm system hitting the high Sierra around Tahoe right now. This is Palisades Tahoe. Notice it's mainly rain. We're seeing mainly rain uh, below 9,000 feet. That's kind of the rain snow line right around 8,500 to 9,000 feet at times. So this is a pretty warm storm system hitting um, a lot of the Sierra right now, but it's got a good chunk of moisture with it. Let me show you what uh, radar looks like. So green is rain on this, blue is going to be your snow, purple is a mix. So the area of low pressure is out here, but it's pushing all of this moisture right into the Sierra, lifting it up, and we're squeezing it out. You've also got heavy precip up here through Washington State, Oregon, some of this through interior BC as well, overrunning into the interior, tiny wave right there in Montana. Um, let me take you in just a little bit closer, a zoom into central California here. And look at that push. So again, just all that, that trajectory is right up against the high Sierra. And look at the uh, the yellow showing up. That's pretty intense. That's a more intense area of uh, precipitation. A little bit of blue there indicated. Uh, very high up again, above 9,000 feet. Um, so here is water vapor satellite imagery. And on this, your moisture, the key areas are in the white, the blues, and the greens. And you can really see it. So there's our area of low pressure. Look at this conveyor belt of moisture slamming into the West Coast, Pacific Northwest, uh, BC, everything kind of rotating around it. Now, in the coming days, there should be two areas of energy that break off and move through the Intermountain West, through the Intermountain Rockies. And at times, it will brush extreme northern Utah, northern Colorado. Certainly, it will hit Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho more squarely. So that's in my forecast, and here are those bullet points. Um, so we've got California storm system today. It's 11.5 with snow above 9,000 and big time wind gusts. That's the jet roaring in there. That will send two waves of moisture into the interior. Then we're going to get into a big area of high pressure, really big, warm temperatures. All the action is going to be out on the East Coast with a deep area of low pressure out there. So here are your best odds of snow. For Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So, for example, in Utah, you've got a little bit of snow on the 6th, a little bit on the 7th, and some 13, 14, 15, and then another shot on 11, 17. All right, let's look at the, uh, the forecast radar here, kind of see where this precip is headed. So we'll start this up about lunchtime today, Wednesday, November uh, 5th. Let me find the... Uh, let me find that. Here it is. All right, let's move ahead. So here's the dinner hour. Look what happens. A little wave right here moves into the Tetons and some into the uh, the Wasatch, and this would likely brush the High Uintas as well. And then the bulk of the precipitation is behind that, closer to the main storm system. All right, here's lunch hour. And look at that. Just a teeny tiny bit right there in northern Colorado. A little bit of leftover snow in northern Utah. It's still snowing up there around the Tetons. And look at Idaho. Got a nice little push of moisture right there. All right, here's the dinner hour um, on Wednesday. All right, here are the early morning hours. So this is probably 5 a.m. right there on Friday, uh, November 7th. So there's your next wave coming in. So like I said, two waves, one initial, and then here comes the second one here with another quick shot of snow for northern Utah. Better snow right there through parts of Idaho, the Tetons, the Wind River, Southwest Montana. All right, there's the lunch hour. So what do you see? There's the lunch hour. A little bit of wave, a little wave of snow right there, kind of cruising through the central and northern mountains of Colorado. All right, let's move ahead. There's the dinner hour on a Friday. And a little bit of snow there, kind of brushing the central and northern mountains of Colorado. A little bit of leftover snow through northern Utah. All right, here is... It's probably 5 a.m. on Saturday, November 8th. Now, at this point, the bulk of the precipitation in the storm system is moving away, and a big area of high pressure will be building in 9, 10, 11, and 12 across the West. All right, so atmospheric pressure anomalies. This is up at about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. You're looking for highs and lows right here, essentially. So this is today. And there it is. There's the powerful storm system, the jet roaring in, the area of low pressure, higher pressure sitting right here across a lot of Colorado um, and uh, just generally the Intermountain. 
All right, next uh, time frame here. So this is going to be Friday 11-7. This would be the second wave right here. You can see it right here running behind the main storm system. And this comes through the northern tier and kind of runs down in that direction. So again, brushing northern Utah, brushing northern Colorado on its way through along with some wind. Now this is even further down the road. So this is 11-15. This is Saturday. Um, this is after we get through that big area of high pressure, which would be right here and sliding away from the west. And look what's uh, filling the void. You've got an area of low pressure there and one right there. So this would be this would represent a nice dip in the jet stream, um, colder air, and more widespread snow if this were actually to verify. 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, somewhere right in there. All right, here's a forecast total precipitation next 10 days across the west. So where you see the reds and those those whites and those purples, those are higher amounts. And this is as if everything fell as rain. So initially you can kind of see it. It's, it's California north, uh, northern Rockies. And then towards the end, we start to add some additional precip down into Utah and Colorado right there very later in the period. But you can see where it maximizes a little bit over the High Sierra, the Cascades, um, a lot of Idaho, northwest Montana, the Tetons, the Wind Rivers. Those areas appear to get the most. Let's look at that as, as snowfall, a simple 10 to 1. So anywhere you see the purple pink, that's over 6 inches on this. That's clearly the, the High Sierra. That's a lot of Wyoming. That's parts of central Idaho. That's a lot of BC, Washington State, Cascades, and interior BC as well. Over the next 10 days, there's not a lot indicated for Utah or Colorado. It's, it's on the lighter side. We'll put it that way. Let's freeze frame that and look at that 10-day snowfall. So again, anything in that purple pink is over six. This is easily over a foot. You can see the brighter whites there in the high Sierra. I'll zoom in on a, that in a second. That's easily over a foot there through a lot of Wyoming. That's probably eight to 12, central Idaho, maybe eight to 14 up there around Glacier and then feed of snow up there in parts of BC. All right, let me zoom in to California. And this is again, 10 day total snow what we're seeing right now is mainly above 9,000. Now down the road, we, we could be looking at lower snow levels at lower elevations with the future storms. So that's how we get to these types of numbers, which are well over a foot. I mean, this is probably where you see these bright whites. That's probably one to two feet right there over a lot of the higher peaks there in the high Sierra. Let's go to the interior Rockies. So you're looking at Wyoming and beyond here. Again, this is well over a foot. You know, this is probably 10 to 16 inches up there through the Wind Rivers, the Tetons, a lot of Yellowstone. Not a lot in Utah. Uh, you might have a few inches right there over the Wasatch, maybe three or four, five over the High Uintas, and maybe a couple of pockets of six, up to six there in the mountains of Colorado. Um, so not a lot there in Utah and Colorado. Let's look at the Northeast. Here's the animation over the next 10 days. Comes in waves and still looking at that. Look at that right there. Um, definitely a, uh, a rotation around an area of low pressure with a lot of cold air and that brings in some lake effect. Look at that. Right off of Lake Michigan, Lake Erie. Looking at some lake effect. Even some, just some general snow across central Ohio, Pennsylvania, up uh, New York. And then of course you have snow up here in the mountains of uh, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So let's zoom in on that. Look at a still frame here up in ski country. Uh, and whatever you see, again, this is all over six inches where you see these purples and pinks. And in fact, this is probably six to 14 inches up here in the parts of New Hampshire, six to 12 up here in the parts of Vermont, and even uh, northern Maine looking at probably six to 12 inches over the next 10 days. Let's look at the snow plumes. Mount Washington. And there it is. There's confirmation of what we were just looking at. This generates about 14 inches ensemble mean by November 20th. In fact, actually by November 18th. And some of the error bars are up around 20 inches on the extreme. Doesn't all come at once. There's a couple of increases there. Um, but up to 14. Not bad. J Peak, very similar. Generates 14 on the ensemble mean by the 17th. You can see the increases there over time. Air bars are up around 20 inches. So 
Jay Peak looking good. Mount Washington, Wildcat, uh, Killington, I'm sure will be in on this. Um, let's go out west. Jackson, Wyoming, things are looking good. 14, 15 inches by November 20th. So things really um, definitely turn more uh, active here. Look at this. Nice uh, run up with snow there after about the 13th. Um, let's go to Berthoud Pass in Colorado. A pretty sad start here. In fact, all the way out through about the 12th, there is just not a lot here. Very dry. But uh, once we get past that, um, things definitely looking up. Look at the acceleration up of snow here after about the 14th, 15th, and then eventually up to about 8. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this mountain weather update. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.